Hey guys, this is Joe Hamilton with the Fire Relay Team. Um, I've been talking a bit about my personal portfolio and how I do make over a hundred thousand dollars a year in cash flow. Um, it's sixteen properties. There's there's a seventeenth that's a short term rental in another state that doesn't cash flow, um, but it, I don't really consider it part of this. But just for setting the record straight, that's out there. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to talk through every single one of these houses and just talk through lessons learned, um, how it's doing, how I feel like it's doing, um, and just kind of give you guys perspective on what, like, I mean, the nitty gritty numbers, I feel like no one actually does this. It's like, like, let me see what you have. Like, let me see what your numbers are. Is it as good as you say it is? Um, is it better? Um, instead of this being such a phantom, you know, real estate, such a, Oh, I do this. I do that. Break it down. Um, and so that's what I want to do here. Um, I mean, I got street names, cities, purchase prices. Um, I mean, my principal interest taxes insurance is, is dead on here. Um, so there's really, there's no hiding. This is a, this is a true number here. And um, let's talk through it. So the very first one, you know, I started the first one is 2019. Um, you'll see my comments over here. I, I lived in this. Um, in 2019, I moved to Michigan um, and I just needed to buy a house and Southfield's a, a decent location at this point. It's already, I mean, you're not going to find a hundred thousand dollar house in Southfield um, right now. So it did pretty good on that. It's on a super busy road, um, which, you know, didn't really care. A single guy um, lived there myself didn't bother me and it doesn't really affect rent that much I, I love a busy road you can get into a good market like Southfield or, or some of these other areas get more house get better location because a busy road is a, a functional obsolence or environmental obsolence basically it devalues the property um, but it affects the value more than it does um, rent and it'll still continue to appreciate it's just always going to be worth 10% less than the houses that's the identical house two blocks back. Um, I don't care about it. I'd rather a lower price entry. So just a standard lived in this thing. Um, I did have to put down 20% because I was selling my other house and I didn't know a ton at that point. So how I had to do it. Um, that's probably one of the mistakes is I probably could have gotten away with a lower money down type loan and stuff. If had I done this, better knowing what fire really team knows now um there's a lot better ways to do that but it didn't matter i mean i have a lower loan amount now only seventy five thousand dollars because of that I mean, it's worth 150 now plus easy i put about fifteen thousand dollar rehab into it um it's a I'm 75 grand equity it's a beast it's renting out 1600 with two pet fees each for 50 bucks. Um, and just this has like a four and a half percent interest rate. Um, tenant pays everything. Um, I'm saving five percent vacancy maintenance capex. Well, I'm budgeting. That's the thing that I should talk through on this is that if you add up all these houses, vacancy maintenance capex, 15% for each, that's 50 grand a year. I, I don't really do any more. The first five I, I did, I separated out that money, put it in a different account. Now I'm sitting on a, about 50, 60 K in a bank account. Well, and split up, split up amongst a couple bank accounts um, that I don't let it get below that. You know, if it does, this cash flow just replenishes it, you know, and, and if it gets way above it or as it gets above it, I pull that money and I go buy another house. So sitting on, for this size portfolio, I think I feel like that's pretty good. I have other cash reserves for other businesses and personal. So there's I'm not too concerned that I couldn't figure these things out. And at this point, I mean, if, if I'm not saving that, this cat these cash flow numbers are all I mean $250 higher, um, which makes this quite a bit higher. But for the purposes of this, I went to to show that we're budgeting that and it does not count towards this cash flow number. So this thing's a monster right now, almost $700 a month. Um, why I bought it in 2019? I mean, I, this isn't a 2008 purchase, it's a 2019 purchase. Um, the market in Metro Detroit has done extremely well. 
Um, I mean, you're talking 50% up um, on my purchase price to ARV with a little sweat equity in there. Have to be, let's look at this thing real quick. Um, I'm even gonna show you this. Um, it's not how I'm gonna do it. Maybe I should have pulled these up first. So this will be faster. Here is what this thing looks like. Um, I'll show you the before picture. I think they might they might not be still up, but uh, I painted this. I didn't do you know I didn't do hardly anything in this kitchen except for clean it. Um, I refinished the hardwood floors and painted it. Are kind of the big things. And you're just talking white appliances. But it's nice. It's clean. I, I glazed. We glazed this. We painted it. Um, just a new faucet. We painted the vanity. Um, probably a new shower head, new toilet. And like I said, it wasn't an outrageous. This is just finish hardwood floors and paint, and it looks really nice. Basement. It was huge. Painted the walls, painted the floor, painted the ceiling flat black. Um, and, and then I, I do new LED lights throughout, ends up looking pretty good. Anyways, I'm going to try to speed this up, but get the point. Did a little landscaping, just minimum. Got rid of more than um, we added. Let's see if I can find an original real quick. Yeah, here's the original. Oh, good, I do have some original pictures. But it was just a, it's a three bedroom bungalow. This thing was on the market for 185 days. I didn't steal a deal from anybody. Um, why is a busy street, 12 mile? Didn't matter, it doesn't matter, clearly. It doesn't look as nice as I have it. They staged it, but. When you're talking, if I could buy a hundred of these houses, I would, and I wouldn't need anything else. Um, but what does that look like today? I mean, what it, it's it's going to look like the the hundred and thirty, hundred forty thousand dollar house in a decent market on a busy street that needs some love that you might feel is overpriced at the moment. Um, it, it, it feels so. You got to have that vision of like, where's the market going? Real estate doesn't go backwards it goes backwards short term but not long term um so like i said in in 10 15 years if you buy just just buy decent houses out there they're all going to be like this in this market anyways moving on um Centralia redford i don't know if i'm going to pull them all up just for for time's sake um a three-bedroom Purchased this for 73. This one is a good example. It's on the market for, again, I mean, 180 days. It had a tenant paying 800 a month. Um, this is a really good location. I'm going to say RV is 140 right now, and I only put another 15 grand into it. Um, a, a killer deal, again, if I could buy 100 of $75,000 houses in that location, I would. They're gone. I mean, the cheapest thing in that area now is 130, 120. Um, but same thing, locked it in and it's a really solid cash flow. This rent is under market. It's close. It's 1400 plus right now, but I've had this tenant. Um, well, so the first tenant was paying 800 a month and, um, it's communication issues. I'm obviously a brand new landlord, um, or, you know, at the time. And, but ultimately just started the eviction process because they weren't communicating um, or paying and ultimately got settled where they paid up, but they also moved out, cleaned it up, got this rent for it. Um, so there's your cash flow. Again, I have a lot of equity in these houses, but I have 4% interest rates. So I personally, I don't need the capital. So I'm not, I can't, I don't want to 
hurt my cash flow because when you burr, when you refinance, you kill cash flow. And it's okay because your ROI is so high because instead of having eighty thousand dollars in equity, I might only have twenty. Um, so with less cash flow, my ROI will be higher. Um, but burr and refinancing kills cash flow. So this would be if I refinance everything in this portfolio, this would be down to like 50k a year. I'd be sitting on a crap ton of money to go buy a whole another portfolio. Um, but that's a lot of work. And if you don't need the capital, then with eight percent interest rates, I, I wouldn't right now. I would wait until I needed the capital or rates go down. Um, and you'll see that right here. This Shakespeare, just jump ahead. This deal right here, this two bedroom. This is the best, arguably the best deal. Well, it is the highest ROI deal in my portfolio. Um, and the cash flow is $89 a month. Um, but I have zero money in it because I bought it for 77 on the market, no pictures, underpaying tenant, 77 cash. And I didn't hardly do anything. I, I kind of gambled on it. Um, and I got my inspection and it looked fine, you know, needed love. It would need 15 grand to make it nice plus, but, um, but I just, I just did a refinance to get my money out without any rehab and it appraised for 105 at the time. This was a while ago, um, a 110 and pulled out my whole $77,000. So I had no money in it and it's cash flowing $90 a month. That's infinite ROI, but it's also one of the lowest cash flowing deals on this list. Um, but that's how that works. Burr is not a heavy cash flow strategy unless you're going to build a massive portfolio. Uh, okay, skipping ahead or getting back to, on track. Walnut four unit. This is a quad and why not? Um, at this point, I was already building a little bit of a reputation and had a direct client be like, will you please buy my house? Um, I liked it. Um, so I did. 193k at this point this thing's worth almost 300,000 um big rehab lots of work needed and done in this house the project a lot of people maybe wouldn't take on um but at this point totally worth it rents were all very low bumping those up there's still some potential um to get those up a little bit more overall a fantastic deal ton of equity love this market so Rivard, this one, this one I think is funny because so many people are like South Warren's so scary. I mean, I could throw a stone from this house and hit eight mile road. Um, and look at that cash flow. I mean, 577. And this thing performs. I mean, it's performed for two years. So I'm at 1370 plus 25 pet. Um bought it for 81k and needed 15,000 of the rehab. Um and same thing is there's still low interest rates at this time. So it's just a cash cow and um, tenant is late sometimes, but they do usually end up paying. So, um, but yeah, I mean, Rivard Street, Warren, look that up. It's directly above eight mile. And most people are like, a lot of people who don't know Detroit or don't know a portfolio like this are like, ah, it's scary, but they work. This Atlantic is kind of in the same neighborhood. Another solid deal um again just on the mls for a while i think it was listed for around this and just gave them what they wanted um it, it, i mean during this time 2021 to 20 you can't screw around too much you know if you're trying to you can screw around after you get it in our contract but screwing around before didn't doesn't work that well unless you're going after one of these deals like centralia um or Shakespeare that was listed on the market for half a year. Uh, Brady, this is a two bedroom, picked it up for 63 in 2021, needed a $15,000 rehab, um, rents at 1122. She's been in there for a while, it's been great. Um, another cash flow monster, got a low interest rate. Buying in 2021. I mean, this is, you guys, you got to remember, people were like terrified to buy at this time. I mean, prices were screaming upward. It's like, ah, you know, 
don't buy prices prices are going to crash and then 2022 don't buy prices are going to crash 2023 prices are for sure going to crash i had so many conversations saying 2023 it's it's not going to crash it might it might stop but it's it like almost can't crash because of all of the data behind it so what i do one two three four five six six houses and i'm trying to do more because that's how confident i was in this market and people think i'd just saying that because i'm a real estate agent but this is that's why i'm putting my money where my mouth is um and this right here is you know that's what happens um For context, my wife and I both work. My, my wife has a good job and then I have a good job. So we live off of her income and we invest all of mine. So that's a luxury of having two incomes, um, but also staying within your means and living off of one of them and just dumping every penny out of the other income into real estate. So also had quite a bit of savings going into this um, to kind of kick things off. Again, living below my means and, and saving a lot of money. But that's it. There's no, there's no gift money in here. Literally, no one helped. There's no grandparents sending money. That's not how it works. Every single penny is from a paycheck of my wife or mine. Um, oh, duplex. This thing was on the market again, half a year. Um, rough and needed a big rehab. You had to assume the city repairs. Um, but $125,000 duplex and wind out right now already. I mean, a year and a half later is like, you're not going to find it. Um, and I knew that. I knew that was coming. I've seen it. I've seen the writing on the wall. Those things are selling for 180 k right now. Easy. And this thing's gorgeous right now, pumping out cash flow you know, with max market rent site, it fixed all up and um it's another really good cash flow. I mean 680, that's what over 350 door. Again, big note. Now I'll read the notes at the end. Dante, this is a funny one. We actually not funny, but we had a client under contract on this house. It was on the market for a while. They were under contract and they ultimately decided that it wasn't good enough. And I was like, I really like that house. You know, I'm going to buy it if you don't. And I don't think people really believe you when you say that. Um, but I did. Um, <laughs> and it didn't need much work. Oak Park is a great area. It's one of the better neighborhoods. Um, and again, same thing. I didn't do much. This is probably like right here, this ARV. It's probably closer to 145. Um, rent's 1550. 1515. Um, that's off. I think I'm getting a pet fee on top of that that I forgot to include in here. Um, anyways, I, I, this is a solid deal. I mean, if you have property management, this is going to be lower, but this, this is one of the deals you're buying for location. Um, so anyways, I really like that three bedroom, one bath, Dante Oak Park, about 125. You can look at that location right now. You're not going to find anything for 125. That's why I bought it. Um, Roosevelt, four bedroom quad. This is another one. It's, coincidentally, another four bedroom that the client was like, Will you buy this house um, directly? And, but sure, $245,000 quad in Farmington Hills. Farmington Hills is the best city on this list. Um, I live in Farmington Hills. Um, so a quad, need a big rehab. This is only rehabbing two of the units. Um, that's going to go keep going up as I rehab other units. But I have two units still way under market rent on this one. Um, and it's already a cash flow monster. I mean, I'd have at least $600 in cash flow more to go. I just think it can be close to two grand in cash flow soon. Um But those tenants both pay. They've been there for a long time, so I don't, I don't, I don't need to go through the hassle of getting them out of there and fixing it up. I have enough projects. I'm trying to do more. So if it's working, let it work. You know, um, this this portfolio it works now, but it's it built this portfolio to retire. You know, in 10, 15, 20 years. So like, 
in 20 years, this is going to be double this number. And so like, I'm not getting greedy at the moment. Um, and also, as you'll see, as we get down into these lower with 8% interest rates, I mean, you got to have the vision right now of interest rates are high, 8%. Your cash flow is going to look low on paper. Um, you got to get over that and realize I'm going to look at this with the benchmark of a 6% interest rate, which is where kind of the averages um, someday I will refinance down into that. Rents will go up. Um, but if I let this pass, it's very, very likely that if rates go down to, they're not, but if rates go down to 6% next year, um, what are prices going to do? They're going to shoot up. So I, I would, I would accept low cash flow with the projection of refinancing later or prices going up in the future. Um, that is what I'm doing. That's my recommendation. Grandpa Warren, 3-1. You're talking 2022, end of 2022, paying 118 for three-bedroom Warren. Um, didn't need much. Need some paint. Um, maybe I shouldn't be showing you guys these rehabs, but um, maybe that's a separate video. I'll have it a little bit faster and just talk through it um that way but this thing runs it for 1450 with a pet fee um i don't know why i don't have that note in there but um just cash flow monster i got this one rates are right still low um no, probably was probably was like six but taxes are low on warrant so um next cash flow higher for it's one of the reasons it's a great year best taylor three bedroom this one i i i i really like this deal it's a burr it's really high roi it's low cash flow um but i mean i missed on this rehab big um 40 grand um, and that was my cost. It'd be a little bit higher. Um, uh, if you weren't doing the work, some of the work yourself. Um, 80K, big rehab. I mean, it worked. Like I said, it definitely worked. Um, but I just, my biggest thing was I miscalculated this number, which is kind of what gets me at times. But anyways, <clears throat> still worked out really well um this is inkster garden city another super busy road um but to get into garden city for 90k big rehab need a lot of work um let's look at that one it's a good one okay So here's what I bought. I mean, just pull up this thing and it's like, ugh, yuck. And this is, those pictures are very favorable. That, they kind of look a little bit closer at this. And <clears throat> we redid this kitchen. That's that's where it was at. Um, baseboard heating. I mean, you got drywall and it's in just not a house that showed well. The pictures are very generous very nice this house back here you can't see it but it's two dumpsters two 20 yard dumpsters full of junk but bam i mean this looks way more inviting now we had to redo this front put a railing on it clean up a lot of this paint pressure wash your driveways clean up your edging mow your grass get rid of landscaping in my opinion um landscaping we build up dirt put down plastic i'm not trying to plant stuff put down plastic and then put mulch over top so the rain hits it hits that plastic and it sheds away um we've got good gutters and do that method I don't, I don't need landscaping for a rental um and i feel really good about water issues using that method i do it all the time now Let's do the gutter extension redo this kitchen when you redo kitchens, man, it's so expensive. 
cabinets becomes cabinets are expensive. Cabinets themselves are expensive. The install is expensive. If you can avoid cabinets and just paint them, which is what I usually try to do. Um, <clears throat> backsplash, actual backsplash is very expensive. Um, so I'm kind of getting more into really paint your cabinets, use a paneling or no backsplash. You don't need it, especially for rentals. Um, I do like granite though. I think that that really elevates a property. It's not that much more expensive than buying from Mike and having it installed. I'm always in really fancy kitchen faucet, um, stainless hardware, add that nice lighting. Lighting is a cheap, high ROI. I do a lot of new appliances, um, a nice shiny hood range vent, range hood vent. Um, some of the stuff I go extra because I'm not as concerned about ROI. I'm trying to set myself up for long term. So some of the stuff I do, I actually don't recommend to others <clears throat> who are more concerned about needing every penny. Um, for me, I'm just like, I'm, I want to set these things up and I want to not pay attention to them. I want to get good tenants. Um, I don't know if you've seen the other picture. We painted this white. Any brick in a house looks horrible when it's red, but it looks amazing when you paint it white. The inside of the door is not supposed to be painted red. That was a mistake, but oh well. Just some new light fixtures make a house look great, cheap. We always do LVP flooring. I'm hoping, kind of gambling. Again, my, my portfolio isn't that mature, but I'm hoping to have the same floor in 10 years on all these houses. Um, you just painted the baseboard covers. Um, doing a lot of new blinds. Another thing that you can do it, not do it. I do it because I can, um, but it kind of adds up. Washer dryer, I'm experimenting with no washer and dryer, kind of on a couple right now. I do it again because I feel like it's nice, but statistically or data wise, if you look at it, it doesn't really affect your rental income. So it's kind of a more of a charity thing almost. Mm -hmm. CO2 detectors, smoke alarms, fire extinguishers everywhere in a house. If you do a lot of plumbing, to move this um, water meter and stuff. It was all behind the kitchen cabinets. That really added up and cost more than what you see. Fans, I do slage digital deadbolts so I don't have to go to properties. I let tenants do self showings, which I can talk about at some point. Somebody wants this boiler. Boilers don't scare me, they last forever. They're effective. Um, don't care less, the quad and Roosevelt. A couple others have boilers. paint, OEP, big rehab, hoping I can just do light touch-ups from here on out. I didn't have to do hardly anything in this kitchen. I think we did maybe something with this here and a new light. Cleaned it, but I don't think we did much else. The backyard was a lot of work to get it to look like that. It's so much junk back there. We just painted this, cleaned it up, some mulch. Um, full set for rent right now. That I mean, I feel fine using market rent for that. Um, Chesterfield East Point. Oh, yeah, bought for 78 is on the market for a while. Had a tenant paying a thousand bucks, so it doesn't look that great on paper. Huge tree in the front yard. Um, but it works. It was just I like East Point. It's just adding a property to the portfolio there again. Well, I'll get into it. Um, Atlantic Warren, 77,000 for a three bedroom. This thing appraised for like 95, maybe, but a tenant paying like 710 or 750, maybe. Um, so I use market rents here, um, but I also put in a rehab budget. So this one is currently still only at seven. This is a market rent projection. Um, so you can call that whatever you want. Um, I've done it seven times in front of it. So I feel comfortable putting those numbers in here, but disclaimer, that's projected. Not a feel good house, pretty dirty, but it's okay. Wilkie Taylor, really like this one, um, on the market. All, the, all these other things are on the market. Any thousand. 
put a $25,000 rehab into it. Um, worth 140 now. This is a very high interest rate. Oh, I did buy this cash. About this cash. So cash flow is very high. Um, it will refinance at some point. Again, when I need that capital, I'll refinance it. This number will dip super low, um, but the ROI will shoot super high and be able to go buy a couple more houses with it. Um, I actually, I think I have a tenant at 1450 that we're looking at signing on Friday. Um, anyways, uh, Lincoln East Point, very rough. I had to go over asking price, um, sewer line issues, um, really tough house to walk through, very dirty, but so actually had everything cleaned out when we bought it. So we just came in and did our rehab, doing our rehab. This is a very cons pretty conservative market rent. Um, but yeah, just be a solid number. So anyways, there it is. Um, a couple of notes. I like to buy sweat equity, as you notice. Um, you're going to get a higher cash flow. There's better deals or less. If you go super high sweat equity, you get into flippers and you're probably going to lose to them because that's all they do is flip and they have cheaper rehabs than we do. Um, if you go turnkey, you're fighting home buyers. So get in sweat equity deals is kind of that sweet spot. Just These are just mid-tier. Flippers don't want them. Home buyers don't want them. I really like that sweet spot. You'll see one, two, three, two bedroom houses. You're not going to see any three twos because three twos are so desirable. The prices are high. A couple busy streets, um, a lot of stuff on the market for a while. Um, anything that wasn't on the market for a while was over asking. Anything that was on the market for a while, um, I got to beat them up. But usually it was like underpaying tenant, very rough to look at. Took some vision. Some of the, a lot of these were no pictures, no showings without an offer. Um, so that's not a risk. Just write the offer and you can back out when you do your showing or do your inspection. Um, you will lose $500 for an inspection if you do it that way, but that's the, the opportunity cost. Um, burrs don't cash flow well, especially when you refinance, you get a high mortgage. Um, right now, if you're doing a burr, it's a good strategy, but your interest rate is going to be in the high, high. So probably gonna have to refinance again um, to get that rate down at some point, but who cares? That's, that's, that's how it works. Um, the people who are having that vision are buying houses and are going to do well. The people who don't have that vision right now are looking at cash flow year one and not buying houses and they're not going to have real estate. And um, Real estate is time in the game. So get in the game, time in the game, 2019, $700 a month. Um, these are interest rates on the fours. And then went to five, sixes. I'm buying in the eights right now. I self-manage, so there's no PM fees, big asterisk. Um, I, there are ways, there's a lot of ways to self-manage if you're local. There are ways to self-manage if you're not local. My sister-in-law does it. Um, but again, if, if you have a great day job, don't do it. Accept the lower cash flow. And this is not where all, this is not where all the money is made. I have over a million dollars in equity. That's where the money is made. That's a lot more money than this cash flow. Um, and then tax benefits. I could get into cost segregation. These I did cost segregation on these two quads and, and drastically dropped my tax liability. Um, so you got to get in the game. You got to own real estate because of all the other benefits. Cash flow is the icing on the cake. It's the most glamorous. So that's what I'm showing. Um, most of the deals came from the MLS, aside from having a really good reputation. Um, so a couple of clients wanted the convenience of me, um, two, not a lot, two out of 16, um, on that short-term rental on the other state, but it's not listed. Um, yeah, that's it. Biggest, biggest advice is get, get in the game, get momentum, um, try something, try these kind of easier deals, um, like this. If you want to change your strategy on property two or three, um, go for it. But um, fire eighteen, this is what we do all day, every day. To study this, we we've got this formula so dialed um, in the Metro Detroit area. Detroit is the number one cash flowing market in the country. It has been for 
decade plus. Um, so even when the market is not great, you're still not going to find better than here. Um, and uh, we can um, happy to help coach through or whatever, um, whatever you need to show you how to do this. Cool. www.firerealityteam.com.